video is on metric prefixes and using these prefixes for metric conversions. These are the prefixes here. Mega, kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico. Here is the mnemonic. Mighty King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Micro, nano, pico. This mnemonic will help you memorizing the sequence of prefixes. Please, please pay attention to the first letter here. Mighty M, M, mega, king, K, K, kilo, Henry, H, H, hecto, doesn't D, deca, D, A, usually U, units, base units, drink D, D, deci, chocolate, C, C, centi, milk, M, M, milli, micro, mu, nano, pico, P. All these prefixes have number values. They all stands for some power of 10 and you can see starting from mega. Mega stands for a big number. It's, a, it's actually extraordinary big number, a million, 10 to power 6. Kilo is 1000, hecto is 100, deca is 10, for unit is just 1. Deci is 10 to power negative 1, meaning the 10th of a unit. Centi is power negative 2, that means that 100, the two zeros will be in the denominator, which is 100th of a unit. This one is 1,000th of a unit, which is milli. And then you have micro. Micro is represented by a Greek letter, mu. It's right here. And it stands for 10 to power negative 6. Then you have nano, negative 9. And 10, this 10 raised to power negative 12 is the meaning for pico. Okay, this is extremely, extremely extra, very, very extraordinary small number. All these negative powers you see here, that means the zeros will be in the denominator, meaning we are talking about the small measurement. In the middle, you have base units, this meter, liter, gram, meter, right here, all this M, M, M meter, all this meter for length, L, liter for volume, grams for mass. So you have base units in the middle, base units in the middle, to the left of the base unit, all these prefixes with positive power, you see positive power, they make, they create a bigger measurement than their base units. And all these to the right, all of these on the right side, these prefixes with negative powers. See that? They will create a measurement which is smaller than their base unit. So I have this in the middle, that's why I made this for you. All right, now going from mega to pico, you go from mega, which is your left side and keep going to the right all these units are becoming smaller please pay attention to the numbers okay they are becoming smaller however if you go in the reverse direction from right to the left they are becoming bigger and bigger here i have another version of metric prefixes written as a ladder okay written as a ladder or stair step right here so you're going down, when you're going down, look here, from top to bottom, from mega to pico, the units are becoming smaller. And as you're going up, upward direction, from pico towards kilo, the units are becoming bigger. So going, as you're going down, what's happening? Smaller unit, when you have a smaller unit, then the number has to be bigger. Look here, big unit, small number. Small unit, big number, because we are talking about the equivalence. That's why we want to make sure when you have a small unit, we need a big number, okay? So going down, once again, as you're going down, units are getting smaller. Is it right? So smaller is the unit, bigger is the number. And how do we get that big number? For that, we have to multiply by the original number by power of 10 which is going to give you the same results when you move decimal to the right. Now, how about when you go up? So now your units are becoming bigger and bigger. So because you're going up and units are becoming bigger, then you're going to need a smaller number so that we can keep the quantity same. So how do we get the smaller number? By dividing. So big unit, small number. How do we get that? By dividing the original number by power of 10 which is same as moving the decimal to the left. Now let's do some conversion problem. Okay, 
12 kilometers to meters let's do this conversion so what are you doing here you want to find how many meters how many meters are there in 12 kilometer so look at the starting unit and then you look at the ending unit our starting unit is here kilo okay which is a big unit and here i have my kilo right here this is a stair step and then the meter is right here this unit is a small so you have a big unit and here we are going to the smaller unit so you're going downwards so where is my kilo here right here correct and where is my meter right here so what's going to happen i'm going to move my decimal to the right one two three three places to the right so here 12 okay one two and three now you must be thinking there you don't see any decimal here whenever you have a whole number when you don't see any decimal point just assume that it's at the end okay so you are moving again your decimal to the three places now what does that even mean so moving this decimal three places one two three is actually same as multiplying by 1000 10 times 10 times 10 so here you go 12 kilometers is equals to 12,000 meters yeah let me write that down here 12,000 meters because one two three three zeros here let me tell you what's happening so 12 kilometers is equals to 12,000 meters now this unit is big this unit is small so to make them equal guys don't forget we are working with equality we want the same quantity on both sides so in order to get the same quantity when you have a big unit you need a small number big number small unit so when you multiply this side has to be equal to when you multiply the right side in this case non-zero digits they are staying the same only the zeros are adjusted see what you did to the zeros you move the decimal so that's another thing that's important let's do the other one more problem here this one 42 now in this problem you have 42.8 milligrams and you want to convert these milligrams to centigrams so starting unit is your small unit this time this is a small one right what did we have before it was we started with the bigger unit this one centi is bigger than milli let's look at the stair step again where is our centi where is our milli so milli is right here and our centi is right here so you're moving from here to here okay from here to here right there how many places did you move you moved one place only to the left so 42.8 move one place to the left and that is going to give you 4.28 centigrams so moving decimal one place to the left from milli to centi is same as dividing by 10. let's do another one here 430 deciliter we want to find out how many liters is it going to make so where is my deci deci is right here correct and where is my liter right here so what are you doing again you're going from deci to liter how many places are you moving to the left you are moving only one place so 430 you moved your decimal one place to the left it becomes 43 liter so this unit was a small because it was deci and you were deci smaller than this liter okay this one was the bigger unit all right let's do another one here 525 decameter to kilometers where is my deca deca is right here and kilometer kilo is right here so you're going one two two places right you're moving your decimal two places to the left so this one is a small deca is a smaller than kilo let me write this down this unit is a small this unit is bigger 525 you're moving your decimal two places to the left here from deca to hecto and hecto to kilo so one two 
you're going from deca to hecto to kilo one and two so 5.35 okay let's go let me how about if we do this just by the prefixes instead of moving the decimal so kilo you know kilo stands for again kilo stands for 1000 right so i can write it like 50 times 10 to power 3 which is when you do the math what's happening here guys this is a bigger unit right you're going to a smaller unit so you have a positive exponent you're going to move your decimal three places to the right here so that is going to give you 50,000 grams make sense now here you have 430 deciliters so if you have already memorized the prefixes deci stands for what deci stands so this one stands for 10 to power 3 which was 1000 deci stands for tenth of a unit here tenth of a liter so i'm going to write 430 times tenth of a liter so 1 over 10 now that means you have 10 in the denominator and you're going to get 43.0 so you have a negative exponent negative exponent means you're going to divide so your decimal is going to move to the left now here you have a very very uh, small number nano we use this for wavelength of light so 400 nanometer you want to find out it has how many meters so 400 nanometer nano stands for what 10 to power negative 9 so let's do the math here this one is 10 raised to power 2 10 raised to power negative 9 you're going to get 10 raised to power negative 7 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay meters so that's your answer this one grams and this one is liter 1 2 and 3 so did you see the difference like before we were actually looking at the letter we were moving the decimal however it's the same thing the only thing is this saves your time uh, if you already know the prefixes you can do either way whether this or that but it's the same technique guys because in this technique all you have done is you're moving your decimal either to the left or to the right meaning either dividing or multiplying this system works it has two conditions it will work only when you're working within the metric units that's the one one condition which is important because metric system is based on number 10 another thing is you want to stay in the same base units okay same basic measurement so here kilograms and grams we are talking about the mass okay grams and grams here deciliter to liter we are talking about one type of liter to another type of liter here one some meter to another meter so we still stay the same type of measurement those are the limitations for using this technique of uh, to uh, this technique to use the conversions now please take time to read the, these notes these are my quick notes here for you and also i have some practice questions practice problems for you please take time read them and uh, use them do those for check for for to check for your understanding i'm also including here my the basic prefix chart it's already done and at the bottom there is something at the very bottom here okay so i hope this video was helpful thank you for watching